today we're with Solar Side Up and we're installing uh, 40 kilowatts of battery backup into two 200 amp services. Uh, this uh, system should be capable of completely maintaining uh, autonomy when the grid goes down. So this is what we're looking for. Batteries, power a house. We have two separate 200 amp panels fed from the main service disconnect on the exterior of the building. Here's where we've changed the service from the old 125 amp uh, disconnect to 260 amp service. So we come off the roof, we're split into two, and these two will individually go down through our existing conduit down into the equipment room. Brought these service entrance conductors into a junction box, and then routed those back through the wall into the end phase switch box. In a household, you may only have one main load panel. You may have sub panels, but in this case, we actually have two service panels. So we're allowing uh, uh, as much power as we can possibly feed into these things. 200 amps of uh, utility grid and uh, 40 amps per panel of battery backup at 240 volts. Uh, so what we have here is an 8x8 tap gutter. Um, and within that, those raceways are the conductors, the outputs for the batteries, uh, as well as the routing to the switches from the batteries and the routings from the service panel to the end phase switches and back to the electrical panels inside. This is the completed installation. We've got the two services coming in from outside. They both go over to the switch. This is the envoy controller combiner box. Then the power comes back out of the switch, feeds each of these two service panels, and the PV no longer comes from the top and rests in this panel. The PV now comes down from the top, split into two. One half goes into this switch, the other half goes into this switch. Behind each switch, with an envoy controller, I've got two 10K battery systems. So I've got 20K battery going into each switch as backup power. Enphase does a really great job of uh, figuring out what needs to go where. So we were able to stack the envoys on top of the switches and all the wiring that when you look at a piece of paper, it looks like it goes everywhere, is actually very short runs that connect. So we have current transformers for measuring consumption uh, and for monitoring our batteries as well as the uh, inverter outputs coming off the roof, um, all route through the switches to the envoys and then back into the switches to terminate. Each switch, this is the main breaker. This is the auto transformer. This is the AC combiner. This is the end charge, the breakers for the batteries. And then from here, the PV comes up, feeds the envoy box right here. And here's the breakers for the envoy control. Here's the cellular modem equipment for communication. If Wi-Fi or direct communication to the envoy doesn't happen, this, this is a backup for that. The interface systems create a microgrid, right? So let's, let's assume right now we're sitting here with 40 kilowatt hours worth of batteries. And the sun's out and shining, the batteries are charged. Oh, what do you know? The utility grid's gone down. So what happens then? Well, your batteries are topped off. So the, the end phase microinverters on the roof are, are constantly in communication with these batteries. And they say, well, the batteries are topped off, but we have, we have requirements for loads in the house. So the solar on the microgrid, the microgrid allows the, uh, the uh, operation of all the home circuits, the 120 and the 240 volt circuits in the house to function. We're not even draining batteries yet. We're not even touching the battery consumption. Sun's out. The microgrid is, is making tons of power and you're using that power instantaneously. You can see here this system is monitoring as on grid. So this is grid tied, grid on, extra power being produced pushes to the grid. Now, let's say seven o'clock, six o'clock rolls around in the, in the fall or in the spring and the sun's down. So no longer are you generating power from the roof. Now, seamlessly, these batteries will kick in and supply all the loads for up to 40 kilowatt hours. Well, what's, what's the payback on a system like this? 
Well, you know, there are some tangibles and there's some intangibles. One of the tangibles is, well, if you got batteries and the power goes out, man, you're set because you, you can surf the internet and, and cook a burrito in the microwave. But also dollars and cents are generated from the ability for these things to um, arbitrage against the utility and use these as your main source of power, even when the grid's up. Here we are about 20 minutes later in off-grid mode and the solar microinverters went off and they restarted and now they're producing power to match the loads of the house and the loads to recharge the batteries. The solar will not produce the extra when on-grid mode is occurring, which right now would be about 10 kilowatts and would push back to the grid. In the microgrid situation, it can only match the power made for the consumption that it's seeing because there's no other place for the extra power to go. So this self-regulates and in the microgrid situation, to produce the right solar, to recharge the batteries at the, at the feed rate, and to match the consumption at the home. So here you can see 10 minutes, 15 minutes later, the grid has established itself with the loads, charging load and the consuming load. I'm gonna turn on a big load on the consuming here at the house, and we're gonna go watch the producing ramp up to match it. So I've added another load, in this case a hairdryer, and you can watch the home consuming load go up. And the solar is equalizing with, the, in this case, the battery discharging to meet that demand. So here we are. I turned the grid power back on about five minutes. It recognized on grid. You can see the solar is bumped up to about 10 kilowatts, as I mentioned. So it's meeting the consuming. It's additionally charging for what the batteries are taking right now, and then exporting the remainder to the grid. Here's my other system, West, that I showed you downstairs. This also has 39 IQ6 Plus inverters, microinverters. Here's the graph and use of this system for the last week, and I'll zoom in on the last day or so. So here I had some motors running overnight. Here's in the morning. The blue is the solar. It's a good solar day yesterday. Here's the batteries recharging. Charged full, 100%. Here's a couple motor uses during the day. Here the sun goes down. The batteries kick in under self-consumption mode. And the batteries operate, discharging up to about 4.2, 4.3 kilowatts. Uh, and to those batteries, completely discharged at to my set rate of 20% endpoint. So those batteries self-consumed and were used up with these motors. So I left these motors on so we could see that overnight. And then the motors continue to run all night. Here's some additional equipment during the day. I've added to those motors. Here's the solar coming in the next, this is today. Here's the batteries charging. And the batteries are at 95% charge as of 11.15 today. So there you have it from evaluating your home system electronics to adding the design work, the permitting, uh, and the install work and the operational parts of the system. Thank you for watching.